Welcome back to another episode of Lobby Call Podcast. Uh, today we have a special guest. We have Elijah Fox, all the way yes, from uh, Durham, North Carolina. Uh, he's an artist, multi I always mess up on this word, multi instrumentalist, <laughs> uh, singer, and producer. Uh, he's based now in LA. He just moved here. Yes, sir. Shout out to Elijah. Um, fire keys player. Dope, dope, oh, dope, dope, you, dope man. piano player. Um, he's worked with people like Tom Mish, Felly, uh, Taylor Bennett. Taylor Bennett. Wow. <laughs> Taylor Bennett. Uh, Pink Sweats, uh, Cautious Clay, Brass Tracks, and the list goes on. I'm not going to, I'm going to let him, I'll let you uh, do your own intro, but just a, a brief synopsis of uh, who, how dope. Uh, Elijah Fox is. So, yeah, I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, well, um, what's up, guys? Uh, thanks so much for having me on <laughs> on the uh, podcast. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm Elijah. I uh, I grew up in Durham, North Carolina, um, playing piano. Um, I, uh, I first started getting into it when I was, like, 11 and um, going to this jazz club um, where there was this guy who was a lot older named Yusuf Salim who would kind of be showing me songs on the keys and so that was kind of what got me into it and then when i was like 13 i started playing a lot more um and then i went to uh oberlin college in uh, out in ohio and then um i moved to new york after that which is where i was at for the past three years um and started playing playing more and getting more into production and then um yeah i just moved to la last week so hey. super excited to be out here and uh just continue uh continue learning and working but um yeah thanks thanks again for having me there we go man so when, when you um you say you went to overland yeah. college mm -hmm. you, so that w was that like a um it's like berkeley or is that like oh uh, yeah it's like a uh, music conservatory um out in ohio so it's actually the oldest uh music conservatory in the u.s oh, which shit. is kind of random but shout <laughs> out shout out to them but it's like a small small program um and uh yeah so i had i was lucky to have these two amazing teachers there um the first was this guy Dan Wall, who's super dope, and then I had this other teacher, Sullivan Fortner, who was um, who was also amazing, um, and had a lot of great experiences out there playing. Um, uh, yeah, they, it was a, it was a really good time. So, there we go. I think Dan went to uh, what what conservatory did you go to, Dan? Uh, no, I went to like Shenandoah briefly, like very oh, nice. briefly. When I say very briefly, I mean like I didn't even. I wasn't even there long enough to go to a class. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, dude, like, the fucking audition, like, the whole adjudication process was such a fucking shit. It wasn't a shit show. It was just, mm -hmm. like, because I'm, I'm not formally trained. Like, I, I never had lessons and stuff like right. that. It was the first time that I actually went into a situation where I felt, you know, completely out of my element. Like, all these, all these cats were, like, way younger than me and stuff like that. And you could just right. tell that they, they had that... That school mindset? It, it was... It was Turn the AC off. It's Happens every good. time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like you know, when you like, when you're when you're working with a musician or or with a quartet or whatever, and you can just tell mm -hmm. that they come from that sort of pedigree where it's just like, yeah. oh, you know, like my my parents are rich or whatever. Oh, yeah, I've, yeah, you yeah. Know, I've been playing like you know the most expensive instruments my mm -hmm. whole life, and yeah, I've had yeah, lessons yeah. for the last fifteen years, and I started when I was like three. Right. You know, it was it was very much that environment, man. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So I went like I I got in, mm -hmm. which was. It, it, it certainly couldn't have been, couldn't have been like, just for the record playing. i was trolling i really didn't know you went to <laughs> <laughs> oh, i really didn't know yeah, you went no, to man. yeah i was just like oh, fuck you. i've never said that shit to you in my life <laughs> Damn. i think it with the feds I was yeah, yeah. oh yeah. you attended as well <laughs> yeah no that was uh, uh that definitely happened but uh i didn't end up going because it was way too fucking expensive man and yeah i was just like i don't know i mean there, there were other composition programs, but that was mm -hmm. the most competitive composition program in like you know in the area. Oh, mm -hmm. nice! But like the it had the same tuition as fucking Stanford. Man. Oh, get so, out of here! Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it was like fourteen k a semester if I didn't live on campus. What? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, for like fifteen credits. Oh like, no! Yeah, and I was like, you guys are <laughs> yeah. fucking cooked. Oh, My girl. parents are broke. This is not what I'm trying to be. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you know, no, so, no. Yeah, hard pass on that, man. But, yeah, uh, you know, because because I mean, again, like the, the the goal has always been film scoring and stuff. So mm -hmm. I, and the. Uh, the department head of the composition program at the time like i mean he was you know classically trained and stuff like that but mm -hmm. he was doing a lot of uh, he was he was scoring a lot of sci-fi movies at the time Ooh, and nice. that was like the main reason i mean because some of my favorite scores are like sci-fi yeah and yeah shit. so uh yeah like what like, what like which ones star wars star, I don't, yeah star <laughs> wars uh star trek 
Nice. Uh, yeah, stuff like that, man. Yeah. Fucking uh, Annihilation was so good, man. Mm. I saw that movie. Yeah, I haven't but, seen it. Yeah, I w- no, I'd love to get into scoring more, too. No, that's... that's we, we gotta do some work while you're here. Yeah, right? yeah. that would be sick. You know, and stop yeah. chasing loops all the time. Right. <laughs> yeah. No shame to chasing loops. <laughs> nah, no, no. Like, yeah, man, yeah. You know, sometimes, like, telling stories of music is pretty sick, man. That's, that's yeah, awesome. right. I don't get into. Or just something l- longer intentional than just, like, a little key yeah. sample, but... Right. Yeah. What, um, what, what made you want to get into music? Like was it like um, a family? Can you say yeah. you, you started when you were eleven? Was it like a family thing? Or? Um, so my grandma right. is a, a pianist. Um, she lives up in Rochester, New York. But um, she was kind of the first person I would hear playing piano. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out, Grandma Ruth. Um, and um, me, mom. Yeah. <laughs> and so I would like when I was a kid, I would go up and like hear her playing, and, I, and uh, she gave my parents our first piano. Um, but um, when I used to be younger, I would like take the toys I had. Like, I had, like, Legos or um, Playmobiles, and I'd, like, put them on the piano, and mm-hmm. then just, like, improvise, like, their, what they were doing, kind of, or, like, I just cool, u- kind of play with it when I was really young, and I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was probably her that first inspired me and g- gave me, like, my first lesson um, every time I would see her. But then I didn't, I didn't, like, start really getting into it until I was, like, 11 or so. Mm. Um but yeah, and she's still playing even though she's like 86 now. Um, and um, I actually just went up to New York and recorded, uh, like brought some mics and recorded a lot of the songs she was working on, which was cool. Right. Um, but um, yeah, so yeah. she's kind of my main main inspiration for that. Dan, what about you? I I know we talked about it before, like, but was it what was like how did, was it, was it your family too, or was it like how did you start? Like, what made you sort want to get into music? Yeah, I mean, you can, you can you can say that I come from like a musical family and stuff like that, but it's not like I didn't come from like the Partridge family or whatever. It wasn't like I had, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it wasn't yeah. like you know, like my my siblings would sing and stuff like that. My dad mm-hmm. was a writer, sort of kind of. My mom was, oh, nice. was was pretty musically talented and stuff like that also. But mm-hmm. it, it it wasn't like you know, like like no one. It wasn't something that everybody in my family pursued. I think I was like the only person who like really, and besides my sister, I think who's like sort of kind of like trying to be an artist and stuff like that slash writer mm-hmm. um but um yeah like i was kind of the only one that tried to pursue it like a career everyone else in my family just really enjoyed it so you know i come yeah. from a family of like musical hobbyists i guess uh-huh. mm. um, no. yeah and it was yeah like it, there was no formal education or anything like that it was just more of a fascination like really really early mm-hmm. i think like the first time i saw like a saxophone being played or the first time uh-huh. i saw an orchestra i was like holy shit yeah. what is going on you know did, did to... you start playing sax first or uh keys uh sax okay like i still kind of consider saxophone my main instrument even though uh-huh. like i barely play it anymore yeah, but uh, you still a beast at it. So you weird, came, like you I'm never practice. I'm like, I, I get by. <laughs> so I'm, you came I'm to keys practicing. after you already started with sax. Yeah, I was like, like pretty. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say I was accomplished on sax, but I was like mm-hmm. very comfortable on yeah. sax before I started taking piano seriously. Oh, nice. If you even want to like call it taking it seriously, like, yeah. You know, like, I, I should be studying piano way harder than I am, you know. But uh, it's. But you got it. I mean. I'm, I'm, I'm alright. I, 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 I get by. <laughs> you know? But um, yeah. yeah. So it was, yeah. Well, that's cool that you had like that. You learned like a melody instrument before piano, mm. or yeah. it's as opposed to. I know a lot of people go the other way around and like drums. Or they bass. can kind of do stuff on piano and then they learn like sax or trumpet or something. So yeah, yeah no, right. honestly. So I think like I always really enjoy playing saxophone and, and trombone and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. once I started playing keys and like getting like really into playing keys, it gave mm-hmm. me. It completely changed how I played saxophone. It made everything much easier because you know, like, right. like if you're playing on on like a like a monophonic instrument or whatever, mm-hmm. and you can only play one one note at a time. So when right. you're improvising over shit, yeah. you know, if you understand piano, you kind of get like this overhead perspective. You basically have yeah. a diagram in your head about how harmonies work right. while you're improvising, which makes mm. everything so much easier. That's, yeah. yeah, that's fire. I didn't even think about yeah. it like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like when typically when I'm soloing, you know, mm-hmm. uh, especially if I'm doing like jazz shit. Like I'm playing saxophone, but I'm not thinking saxophone at all. You think like I'm yeah, piano? Thinking piano the entire time. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it makes that cheat so much easier. Yeah, yeah, no, it's super cheat code, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think I think I me I think I started because um, like my family's I come from like a pretty musical family. Um, mm-hmm. Like at, at least I'm the youngest of eleven, same parents, and oh, I really? think. All of my sisters and brothers. Well, you gotta specify that too. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, no, we all got the same parents. <laughs> no. Nah, like you know, same parents. But um, like 
I think all of my brothers and sisters, either they sing or they play an instrument very well. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So wow. me being the youngest, I'm like, I'm born into it. So it's like, yeah. this is just natural. You know, it's, I'm, I'm around it all the time. We had a piano. Mm-hmm. I think my um, my brother, who's above me, like 10 years older than me, but he plays bass and keys, fire bass player, fire keys player, wow. and he sings. And then um, all my sisters sing mm-hmm. um, and play keys. And, and my mm-hmm. bro- my other brother plays drums. And it's, it's like wow. a whole thing. So for me, um, it was like, oh, this is just the natural order of things. Right. Music is just like, you know, it's supposed mm-hmm. to be like a thing so that's how i, I kind of got introduced to it but um when i really figured out that okay this is something i really want to do mm-hmm. was i think it was movies is what really like got me into like you know mm-hmm. oh i want to do this you know yeah. what i mean like I'm that sure. passion yeah. to do because I, I would always like tinker around on the piano as a kid mm-hmm. but i didn't really like you know really sit down and take it seriously until i yeah. got like into college honestly mm-hmm. i had started playing keys and co- like learn t- teach myself how to play keys in college oh nice um and then same thing with bass bass and keys i learned i, I told myself i played bass and keys in college mm-hmm. and in high school like senior year my my brother bought me guitar and i just picked that up too so oh, um i think that's that's where it kind of you know Mm-hmm. kind of stems from so uh, so we're kind of like we're all multi-instrumentists but w- yeah. how, when what instruments do you play a lot mm. i know you play um, keys you're yeah. you're, you're a, a, a beast on keys oh thank you i want y'all to know you make me not want to play <laughs> right, keys like, lot, bro. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, like, every time we <laughs> said i'm like fuck this what am i doing here like no that's too nice um but i uh i i also yeah keys is definitely my main instrument but i i also play guitar bass drums and uh ukulele and then i sing a little bit um but i wish i could play some more like woodwinds or brass instruments mm. or, um i played tenor sax in middle school but i can't really play you it like low-key look like a tenor sax player <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was that was my middle school vibe with the shaggy hair uh, sax. Yeah, well yeah um so, what would you say is your, your your favorite instrument to play out of all those uh i would say i, I probably have the most fun on drums mm. but i think like keys i definitely have like the deepest relationship with like in terms of i just put more time way more time in there than anywhere right. other instruments so on guitar i can like kind of hang but not not really i don't have i don't have amazing technique on anything or i don't have good technique on anything other than keys really yeah mm. i'm self-trained on everything else not that that can't give you good technique but yeah, yeah no 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 i get you yeah <laughs> Like but, Max has um, terrible technique on keys. Where you you gotta watch Max, <laughs> and he sounds good. Don't be yeah. wrong. Like uh, Max sounds great on keys. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like he's baby Robert Glasper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yo, he got the ugliest technique of. He, first of all, he, he I've never seen this nigga use his thumbs pause in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like he, like, he be like, and he just mashes the keys like this. So it's the ugliest shit I've ever seen. Damn. Man. Yo, no, and and that, that just like I said, it just goes back to me. I, I taught myself how to play. So I didn't really yeah. I, I didn't have any training or any type of guidance to say, hey, this is how you hold, this is how you position your fingers, mm-hmm. this is yeah. how you you know what I'm saying? So um so that's why, you know, and I stuck in my way. So that's, no, that's the thing, man. You know. But I, mean, I, I really get- feel like if it's just you know, if you're self taught and like you never get uh, uh guidance early. Yeah. Then you're, you know, yeah, no, absolutely. It's like man. you can't teach your old dog new tricks. For sure, yeah, yeah. I get you that. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah, and sometimes like, I mean, you can try because I think there's definitely certain things that I changed once I went to school and I was, I mean, even though I didn't have lessons, I spent a lot of time with cats who were, you know, classically trained and shit. So I was yeah. sort of emulating their technique when they played. Right. And like, I mean, I didn't change everything about how I played, but there were definitely certain things that I noticed once I made that switch, it uh-huh. made things a lot easier. Yeah. So I don't like given that we're all like basically like self-taught and mm-hmm. well like mo- most of our instruments anyway. Yeah. Like, is there anything that you guys try to emulate when you're teaching yourself an instrument, or like any people that you try to emulate when you're teaching yourself guitar or bass or whatever? Okay, Dan, asking no, the no. question. I'm just kidding. No, no, I'm just kidding. no. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you go first. Um, yeah, I mean, I think um, well, a lot of times what uh, what I would what I would try to do when I was playing guitar or bass was just emulate a voice or like emulate what 
uh, a singer could do or, or just play around with the stuff you can do that you can't do on piano yeah. without a pitch bend wheel so kind mm-hmm. of like um like b- bending notes or and stuff but um yeah i mean on on guitar i was definitely uh like inspired by like uh john mayer at the time mm-hmm. when i back yeah. when i was in middle school i was yeah. fucking with him um and like uh hmm grant green uh but I don't sound like these people even remotely. But um, yeah, uh, Jeff Buckley, I was listening to a lot, um, and then Thundercat for bass for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you notice that when you're, uh, do you notice that keys influences how you play other like instruments and stuff? Uh, definitely, yeah, and a and lot vice of versa. yeah, definitely vice versa. A lot of the things I I've act, I feel like I've taken more from guitar for keys. A lot of the stuff with. Like they teach guitar with like finger picking patterns, yeah. and all of that stuff I feel like can translate to keys for arpeggios. Mm. So like if you think about uh like a one two three four thing on guitar, but then like people don't really practice keys in the same way, mm-hmm. but it's all like kind of just different patterns. So or accompaniment patterns. So uh, I feel like playing guitar ma- definitely made me way better at playing keys with guitarists mm. because That's then cool. I could kind of understand sense. guitar a little bit. Right. Um, but yeah. How did you feel about um, kind of like those relationships? Like, do you feel like you're better able to play with uh, keys players when you're on sax? Because you no, absolutely. Like, uh, maybe I wouldn't say that studying. Or like, I wouldn't say that practicing piano made me made me a better saxophone player when I'm playing with keyboardists. But uh-huh. I think like uh, like fucking around with guitar and fucking around with bass a little bit. Mm-hmm made me way more cognizant of what I'm doing when I'm playing keys. Yeah. Especially playing with this dude, because, like, he's, like, uh, like I think maybe four or five years ago, I wouldn't have been able to play keys with Max at all. Mm-hmm. Because, like, how, like, you'd be all over the place when you play, you know what I'm saying? So if I didn't, you know, take into account how guitar play, how guitar players play and how bassists play, then I'd be clashing with them all the time when right. playing keys. So I think, mm-hmm. I think just playing with other people and studying mm-hmm. a little bit kind of taught me how to get the fuck out of the way. When yeah, I'm yeah. With cats that really know how to play. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. I, I think for me, like how I how okay, just going back to like just the self talk thing. <clears throat> when I talk, I, I started off first. I start firstly. I started playing violin first. That was my first oh, wow. instrument. Nice. Um, but when I started playing guitar, I didn't. I wasn't learning guitar on like YouTube tutorials and just uh-huh. okay. This is how. Just going back how I finger and how I play. Uh-huh. I learn. I taught myself by listening. I use mm-hmm. my ear. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I listened to a lot of um, piano players, jazz piano players, and uh-huh. stuff like that. I didn't listen to for, for guitar. I didn't listen to guitar players. Yeah. So that's why a lot of my voicings and stuff like that kind of uh, um, emulate piano players. Same thing. Oh, nice. Everything I play is piano player based, jazz piano player based. Like so, even though, even the way I play bass. Mm-hmm. I learned to play bass by listening to keyboard players. Oh, nice. I didn't listen to bass players. Yeah. So even just the way I chord on bass, mm-hmm. I do a lot of chording on bass. Even before I even knew who Thundercat was, I didn't. I was uh-huh. already like playing okay, chords. Okay, listen yeah. to Robert Glasper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to Robert Glasper. Um, you know, um, Eldar. Uh-huh. Uh, oh yeah. Who else? Um, just different jazz. Yeah. keyboard players and that's what I was listening to and that's what I was doing on bass so right. that that kind of um, my style of playing is from listening and not even looking so even when I play piano mm-hmm. I didn't learn piano when I taught myself piano I didn't I wasn't looking at videos I wasn't looking at yeah. I didn't learn by looking I learned by listening so I would try to emulate what I heard no matter how I was able to do it so I didn't I didn't use my thumbs you yeah. know what I mean yeah. so Right. That, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I, yeah, it's my ear. I just learned yeah, yeah, by yeah. my ear. So, yeah, you know. That's a good way to do it. Speaking of piano players, what are your, yeah. what are some of your your favorite piano players, and, um, and, and what piano players kind of influence the way you play? Um. Well, my I would say my my probably my two favorites would be well actually, I'll be just um, Art Tatum is probably my Ooh, my favorite of all time. Um, I just think he's the best and like. 
I mean, his technique is insane, but his also his just his voicing choice and his harmonies mm-hmm. sounds so fresh, and mm-hmm. it sounds even now so even, modern even, even now. today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then his rhythms are just like, I just I don't know. He's he's still this the the all time best for me. Um, but I also really like um, I've been getting a lot into uh, Phineas Newborn Jr. recently. Okay, uh, a little bit lesser known. He's sick. Um, Ahmad Jamal, Errol Garner. Oscar Peterson for mm. sure. Oscar Peterson, absolutely. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Keith Jarrett recently. Um, some of his solo um, stuff where he just improvised the whole concert and mm-hmm. then put it on uh, um, out on a record. But some of that stuff I hadn't checked out before. But it was, oh, it's actually, yeah, I know what you're talking. Yeah, about. he doesn't yeah, like play super anything. Inspiring. He doesn't play anything twice. Right? Yeah, yeah. He just yeah. It, he makes it up all up on the spot. Right. But then like. All the stuff sounds like really nostalgic. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's very, it's very strange. Man. It's kind of a mix of like rocky gospel, but then also like classical. It's, it, it's mm-hmm. just like so many things. But I've been getting more into that. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, Glasper's probably a huge influence on me. Bill mm-hmm. Evans, um, mm-hmm. Chick, R- rest in peace. R- yeah, R.P. R- Chick. Um, but yeah, there's there's so many. I, I guess I I guess I find myself. I'm kind of stuck in, I don't really, there's not that much modern jazz I I listen to. Like, I, I like more, you know, Glasper and Thundercat, but in terms of jazz, I kind of, I, I prefer just like classic, like before, you know, 1970. Right. Uh, 80s jazz is like not my thing. I, although I do really like Kenny Kirkland. Mm, okay. Um, from the 80s, but uh, yeah. What am I, who are some of your, your big guys though for, for Keys? I think for me, um, going back to just like um, learning how to play, teach myself to play keys, and what I listened to a lot um, mm-hmm. was number one, Robert Glasper. Yeah. Robert Glasper. <laughs> I think uh, I started listening to Robert Glasper um, on MySpace. Oh, and then wow. that's what oh, kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like back. I they had like a music f- f- feature. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can like download the song. Whoa, Sorry, that's crazy. <laughs> I stole music. <laughs> no, nah, but um, back on his like Canvas album and Mood oh, album, yeah, I would yeah. listen, listen, uh, listen to that. I think it was um, Downtime, Downtown. Or, I yeah, forgot. Yeah. And I would just listen to that over and over and over and over again. Um, Eldar, I listened to a lot of Eldar back in the day. Um, who else? Oscar Peterson, of course. A lot of a lot of pianists that you already named, Bill Evans too, uh, really kind of inspired me. My playing, um, uh, what's that one guy's name? Uh, George Gershwin. Oh, yeah. yeah, I listened to a lot of George Gershwin too. I think Rhapsody in Blue was what really got me on him. Um, yeah. yeah, so I think those those were like my probably my favorite keyboard players now. But now, like I think Kiefer was my is, I love. Mm-hmm. I listen to a lot of Kiefer. Um, who else? Dan, I'll, I'll let you go while I think. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I don't have that many like inspirational pianists because I don't really listen to pianists like that. I think all my biggest musical inspirations come from composers. Like, I mean, yeah, sure. Like, I love, uh, like, I love Chick and Oscar Peterson and Bill Evans and all them. But um, I think, especially when I'm, especially when I'm playing, I'm not typically trying to emulate different keyboard players. Mm-hmm. Uh, I th- yeah, the, the composers that I really like sort of just permeate everything that I do, you know, mm. when, when I'm playing, especially like harmonically. Like, uh, like I know I, I talk about John Williams on this podcast all the time, who's, who's, who's basically, as far as I'm concerned, just like a, a Stravinsky clone. Nice. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're, they're the same <laughs> fucking person. You know what I'm saying? So, like, like how they voice things, it's, it's just like, like, like a shit ton of seven chords, but they always put the seventh on the bottom, and it's fat as fuck, man. And like they always bass it, and or they always voice them in the bass and stuff like that. So stuff like that, you know. Again, Joe Hisaishi is, is one of my favorite composers of all time, and like how like, I don't, his use of chordals or whatever is exactly how I play when I'm playing keys. I mean, obviously he orchestrates it for an entire you know orchestra and stuff right. like that. But you know, I kind I kind of just like take all his voicings and move them the keys, and it makes. I, don't, it, it, I think especially when I'm playing with like a lot of with like a lot of guys who do like a lot of cluster stuff, like those open voice things really yeah. make it easier for things to like mesh. Mm, yeah, I, yeah. I think that's like a, a a cool way to think about keys too, because like to, or to, <clears throat> to to listen to take composers as a reference, because it's like there is so many possibilities of orchestration just mm-hmm. on keys yeah. to kind of play around with like different options. I think is 
it's rare it's rare that it's like kind of the only instrument where you can like really do be an orchestra yeah, yeah look, me, high you key yourself, yeah. Awesome, high man. key yeah but I say yeah um so you know we're, we're all musicians artists and stuff like that but I wanted to ask you specifically I think I, I don't know if I asked Dan before but uh, what 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 is it that drives you musically? So for me, it used mm-hmm. to be I'm not gonna lie, it used to be the bitch. It's the house. It used to be the house. Nah, I used to be the house. I used to want, want to get like you know, yeah, you know, get the va- not validation, but just like get the attention of of I'm women. Tour and, again, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh. I used to want you know want to impress the the, the, the honeys. You know, yeah. impress the women. Um. But you know, it, it could be like money. I think that's money is like um, a driving force behind mm-hmm. why I do music. But I think at ultimately for me, it's like my passion right. for music and me loving it and me being good at it. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, what, what, what drives you music? Music. Um, well, yeah, I think um, I think one of the main. <laughs> I, I mean, not. in addition to uh, to the women, but I think uh, <laughs> like uh, one of the main thing is just like. Uh, to the just the feel the connection of like to play something and have someone feel it Mm -hmm. um is kind of what what keeps me you know making music but also to kind of to think about some of the things like like uh film composers but all the feelings that people can't put into words but that you can express through music and then Mm. when someone else can feel that feeling that maybe you can't articulate and like personally you know i i Sometimes it's hard to say how you feel in these like specific feelings, but the right. fact that someone could feel some part of that through music, I think is like a really powerful thing. Mm. Um, and also I just think like the the history of like the piano is such a is such a deep instrument. It so is. to kind yeah. of just make and I was thinking about this recently, but like instead of trying to make like instead of trying to sound good on piano, mm-hmm. I kind of want to focus on just trying to make the piano sound good. Yeah. And like mm, just play just play something that like uh I don't know, that the just kind of like respect or respecting that instrument and trying to get a new sound out of it kind of. Yeah. Mm. Um but yeah, that, I think yeah, the connection thing is or just you know, connecting with others is probably the main main reason. I got you. But there's a lot of level reasons. Yeah. That's interesting. Dan, yeah. what about for you? What was the question? What drives you music? I'm sorry, I am so hungover right now. <laughs> like, like, I'm, I'm gonna zone out a lot over the course of this podcast, man. Like I can't, I can't even front. You some Gatorade, some Pedialyte, so God like, damn, you replenish man. your electrolytes. Like, um, you know, I, I was having this conversation with with one of my friends yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like, I'm, I'm definitely like, especially driven to do what I do, but there's also a part of me that feels like I don't have a choice. You know what mm, I mean? Like it's it's not yeah. Because yeah, I mean, like, I think I think when you're when you're truly committed to something like music or really just like art in general, like one of the things that it's especially difficult to make a living in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 kind of nuts that we've been doing this for you know. Like I've been playing every day, like playing and writing every day of my life since I was 10 years old. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm 29 now, and I'm not a like. I'm not a millionaire yet. And the fact that I've been doing that for this long yeah. and I'm not, I don't have like $10 million in the bank means that I'm out of my fucking mind. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Or, or it means that I just don't have a choice because I feel it that deeply. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't think that I could be happy doing anything else. Right. No how lucrative it is. I mean, granted, don't get me wrong. Like women are lit. Yeah, <laughs> like it's 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 fantastic. That's the nice you know perks that come with. Yeah. <laughs> no, like the like the and how I mean how like they are fantastic. How, yeah, and potentially like Shout how lucrative women. music can be. Uh-huh. Like it's 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 definitely like no, that's that's just fucking tight. Right. You know. Um, also, I think it's a it's an addictive feeling that when like when you play something in front of you know fifty people or a thousand yeah. people or ten thousand people, that you get that instant gratification afterwards i'm mean, assuming you're doing your job well and you're doing right. a good job at connecting with the crowd you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but like when you get when you get this after mm-hmm. you do some wild shit on stage and you watch ten thousand people lose their shit for something that you cultivated over the last 10 years mm-hmm. or however long you've been playing it's yeah it's it's hard to it's hard to duplicate that in anything else you know yeah so that's 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 a big one for me that's yeah that's definitely a thing man i think and, and just to piggyback off that it's just like 
yeah it's like it's almost for me i i almost have to do it you know what i mean like i it's my everyone has their certain creative outlets you know that they do and for me mine is music it's the only thing i'm good at i don't think <laughs> giggity but um <laughs> Yo, i'm signing off this is <laughs> <I'm> so trash <laughs> No, but it, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm naturally. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! No, but like, you know, it's, it's, the, it's, it's, you know, I dry, even if I wasn't getting paid for it, even if I wasn't, you know, getting mm. women or fame or anything like that, it's something I would do. For... Shout out to the wife. Yeah, shout out to the wife. <laughs> Lauren. No, but um, <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's, it's something I would do for free. And, um, you know, it's, it's just something that I, that I, you know, I love to do. So, yeah. but all the other perks are, you know, yeah, I think those perks too. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what is something completely unrelated to music that you like want to do in the future? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I would love to start like brewing like some iced teas and like mm. selling those. Like not not exactly like this, but like make like a nice like iced jasmine tea with some C B D. Put that put that on the stolen you know, bottle. Yeah. But um yeah, just some side hustles like that would be cool. Fox right in about tea. like one year, you're gonna see me just like randomly drop a big ass iced tea company with my face on the front. <laughs> yeah. It's just gonna be like C B D jasmine tea. Yeah. It's like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Just my cooning ass face on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stealing this idea. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, some some little uh some you hustles open, like that. Like a cool. business or something like that? Yeah. I'm free. I fuck with tea. Free. I think for me I th- I always wanted to like get into like acting uh-huh. and do like mo- maybe movies or, you know. Yeah. Some type of acting. Um I've done plays in the past and Nice. I'm, I'm kind of good at it, you know what I'm saying? But nice. you know, um, so yeah, I think I was I wanted to get into acting. I want to get into acting just a little bit, some slight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Daniel, <laughs> porn. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm actually uh, I'm, I'm I'm training so I can be on black.com. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be fucking oh. sick. Yes, you, <laughs> it's like your first scoring thing. Is like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and you have to use like an eighty cent or some shit. <laughs> Yo. That's funny. Yo. <laughs> that would be funny. It's like I finally got the that that movie scoring film scoring job I want. So I'm the in house producer at <laughs> oh, <laughs> Pornhub no. or something. Dude, I would yo, I would I would produce for Pornhub. Yeah, I would I would produce for Pornhub in a hot minute, man. Like I don't like just in a second, yo. X videos <laughs> presents Dan Foster. Yeah. No. Soundtrack. Like, it's like it's all like sax, like looping stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be sick, man. Yeah, that'd be. Yeah, nah, I'm like playing Black Love. That's that's funny. No, that's that's a good question, man. I think I definitely have like long term goals in my career and 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 short term ones, but. Yeah, I think I feel like I've been so like bogged down in not bogged down, but so stuck on what I'm doing in music that what would I do yeah. outside of music in the future? I'm not, I'm not, I mean, like outside of you know investing and and stuff like that, just like buying assets as I grow in my career and mm-hmm. stuff. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not sure. But er- everything that you want to do not non musically is predicated on music. Probably, I think. I think just because I love I love to cook so much, at some point I want to open like a. Not not a full restaurant, but I'd love to have like little pop ups and stuff with uh like Puerto Rican fusion cuisine. Ooh, like maybe like yeah, just so like y'all Puerto know, Italian viewers fusion. and listeners, Dan is a fire cook. This dude Damn. can cook, bro. I make some bamas ropa vieja if you want some. Yeah, he, he <laughs> cook his ass off, man. But yeah, no, yeah, I made some pollo guisado yesterday. That shit was busting. So I, th- I think I definitely want to do something food related later on. Mm. Just honestly, just as a hobby, if nothing else, you know, mm-hmm. like little pop up bars slash you know food counters and stuff. That'd be sick. That'd be sick. Yeah, it, it would be dope to like. I always wanted to have like open up like a little coffee shop. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Just like something yeah. quaint, nothing too, nothing too like you know big and 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 you know yeah. crazy, but just to have like live music sometimes. And, yeah, that'd you know, be a little place you could play, just having lo-fi in the background and yeah, you know, vibe. Call that'd be it sick. Maxwell's house. 
You know what I'm saying? So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maxwell's house. Oh, yeah, it'll be dope. It's, it's going to be like Bar Louie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, pay all your musicians like 50 $80 bucks a night. for seven hours. <laughs> and, and, and some chicken. Right. And half off drinks. A chicken dinner. But right. Only, but only only beer, though. No cocktails. <laughs> Yo. Bro, Yo, how only bad ideas. was like, how bad was the grind? Like before you started doing industry shit. Like, because oh, like, we talk about this shit all the time, yeah. you know, just like you know, playing gigs for like fifty bucks or like no money at all, and they just feed oh, you yeah. afterwards. Or playing for certain churches and like they promise you X amount of dollars, right, and then yeah. they'll be like, you know, we can't bless you the way we want to bless you. You know what I'm saying? But like, so they yeah. just like feed you some super salty green beans and chicken or something. Yeah. Like, like what was how how rough was the grind um, you like before you're doing the industry stuff? Well, yeah, man. I mean, when I was when I first moved to New York. um I didn't have a job and I had like maybe fifteen hundred dollars or no, yeah, fifteen hundred dollars after I paid rent. Um, so I was like taking basically any gig I could get, like the first gig I played I think I got twenty bucks. <laughs> and I would do gigs for free, like mm-hmm. of my own stuff at first. Exposure. And some of the some of the, one of the one of the gigs I was at there was like two people there. Um, wow. and I'm just like yeah, just like, you know, I didn't. I didn't even have Instagram until my senior year of college. So when mm-hmm. I first moved to New York, I did, I had like you know three two hundred followers and was uh, just like, damn. just basically doing anything I could to just like play with people or uh-huh. like, you know, losing money taking the subway to rehearsals and mm-hmm. like, yeah. but just like, you know, kind of persevering and, but I was still I was still doing gigs, you know, gigs with people I. I liked playing with for like, you know, sometimes very little money just because, you know, I wanted to. And, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think that there'd be a lot of times when I would be like, I would be at like, you know, a, in terms of sessions, I was doing everything for free. But I would be like at like uh, a session or something like, you know, smoking weed. Then I would be like flip on like a purple polo hop on my bike bike to teach like some kid a piano lesson oh, and then like go back to another studio <laughs> and just like and just you know do going all around new york like biking around new york like almost getting in crashes and shit oh. like just just for like just to barely just to pay rent and like i didn't save any money really yeah. Damn. but you know it was it was it was fun at the time it was just kind of a lot of work and you know yeah but working just working really hard and, and not saving anything yeah. But yeah did you have a manager or like an agent i didn't time? have anything uh until like a year ago yeah oh so you just got you just started getting managed last year uh yeah about like around or i guess two summers ago so gotcha. mm-hmm. uh, but yeah. yeah that's wild man yeah man i mean go back to the, the 757 days man uh, like yeah. playing that playing that. listen Playing at at bars just for drunk people, just oh, being yeah. background noise is just like, yeah. it's it's like the most humbling and humiliating thing. Not humiliating, but like yeah. the most humbling thing as a musician is just like, okay, you're going to a restaurant or a bar, mm-hmm. people are drunk, coming yeah. up to you. Uh, play free bird or play <laughs> yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying and just yeah. like uh, you, and you're basically background noise yeah for like drunk people and you may be killing you may yeah. be doing the you know what doesn't I'm saying matter. but yeah doesn't matter man doesn't yeah. matter one of the most awkward gigs I had would would have been in, in New York I used to play at this place called The Belfry I don't know if I should shout this out but it was like they always had like a sugar daddy it was like a sugar daddy bar oh, so shit. almost everyone would be like a 70 or 80 year old guy with like <laughs> a, like my age or like 18 year old girl and i was just playing uh, keys like God, i hope you don't make a move like right now it was just so awkward hey, look older people they they uh they appreciate jazz yeah you they, did, they, they would tip well to like flex for the date or whatever but it would just be so <laughs> awkward looking around the table like oh no not right <laughs> but yeah man, man, that's the worst but i remember those days man playing for like seven literally it would be like from Nine to like two o'clock in the morning, yeah, man. for like seventy five dollars. Fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. Yeah, it was. And, and I would still feel lucky because I had a gig, or or like, I, or I would still feel like, oh, I'm doing, I'm make, like, I don't know. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I feel like no, that's the thing. The man. other people that yeah. wanted that gig or what, or just wanted a gig. Yeah, so. man, dude, right. I was just, I was just fucking stoked to play outside of the house. Yeah, or outside of church or whatever. It's like, oh shit, yeah. you know, I'm going to this bar. I'm gonna play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm gonna play say yes for 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. yeah, yo, I'm gonna play yeah. window seat for 30 yeah. minutes. Right. Like, you yeah. know, yeah, I was, I was just. Is it the way? <laughs> if I play Is It The Way one more goddamn time, man. No shade, because I love the song, but... Dude. It's funny. We, we met we met the people... We met the guy who, like, produced all those records. Shout out to uh, Andre Harris. And, Andre Harris, man. There we go. Damn, that's yeah, crazy. we worked with him. It was pretty dope. Yeah, no, we, yeah, we, made some, we made some heat with Andre, man. Yeah, yeah we did. That was a good couple of yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, Shout dude, out we're, Andre, we're, man. Yeah, we were at this, uh, this writing camp up in... Uh, up in Malibu for a couple of weeks. Ooh, nice. Yeah, or no, it was just it was just one week for uh, cause this I don't, I don't know. Are you familiar with uh, Ombre? Mm, she uh, she's an artist. Well, she's like up and coming artist. Uh -huh. But uh, she's been writing for a long time. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. and uh, yeah, she writes for. I mean, she writes for a bunch of people, but she writes that's for it. Kalani a lot. Oh, and, nice. Yeah, that's actually how I ended up in the Kalani placement. Was oh, yeah. You had one in the last album. Yeah, uh, Wait, what's I did. On? I did oh. uh, water with um, Dude, plastic. I love that. I love that album. It's 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 a good album. That's man. the same. That's what's the album called again? Um, uh, it, it, it was, was good until it, was it wasn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Dude, that was like one of my most played albums. That's crazy. I did Lonnie, not know you produced that. You so. are paying my bills. Thank you, sir. <laughs> 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 I listened to that like four hundred. <laughs> yeah, no. But yeah, yeah no, it's it's yeah. We're we're doing. Oh, yo, she's she's so plugged. Because Masiga was on that too. Hate yeah. The yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we both had a cut on the album. It was, it was cool. That's man. dope. But um. But yeah, no, we were up there working on Ombre's new project, and like a bunch of gnarly ass producers pulled up, man. Like Los Ooh. Hendricks was there, yeah. DeAndre Harris Shout was out Los. there. Wow. Yeah, Shout out bro. Andre Harris. I gotta get him up here too. Yeah, no, absolutely, Damn. man. What's uh, who was it? Child, was Childish Major there? Oh, he's tight. Yeah, he's a uh, Atlanta cat. Or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's from South Carolina, but South yeah. Carolina. Yeah, yeah, thank you. But um, yeah, no, he was up there, man. We were just making wow. with a bunch mm -hmm. of cats, man. It, it was, was on awesome. the beach in Malibu. Or, uh, it was like in the, the mountains, yeah. low okay, key. Nice. But you could see like the water. It was, it was beautiful. That's fire. beautiful out there, man. Yeah, that no, was it was beautiful, man. But yeah, that whole that whole situation was awesome, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I've I never done like a that. writing camp type lockout thing like a week like that, but I'd love to. That sounds just so fun. It's cool, man. It's like I mean, basically everything you need is is just there, yeah, you know, right like, there. Right. You know, like you get fed. You're probably drunk half the time. Yeah, you know, <laughs> everyone's sleeping so in, and like, but then it's like you know we're working for. 10 hours straight mm -hmm. whatever yeah and we start promptly at like 6 p.m and then like everyone nice. goes to bed around dawn yeah you know I mean? that sounds so fun yeah no it's 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 like the perfect just fostering environment for creativity man right. it's just mm -hmm. like it's it's very lax most of the time you know nice. and yeah you just got to create with with hitters man like that's for killers sick. every time man. for viewers and listeners who don't know what a writing camp is it's it's just a group of producers musicians and um they come to like maybe like a house or something um or a studio but mm -hmm. usually it's a house um like a big house or something like that and um we just come up with the ideas record ideas for an artist or for a writer and then those all those ideas whatever gets you know polished and everything gets mm -hmm. um uh pl placed it might get placed place means like an artist uses it mm -hmm. um for the record or whatever and so that's called a placement so just a little, mm -hmm. yeah. little context there Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, look. Was like now that you're in, now that you're in LA, do you have cats that you're desperately trying to work with? Because I mean, like, I mean, New York is is great, you know. What yeah. I'm saying? But there's so much fucking. There's so in many LA. more people out here. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm definitely kind of like, you know, brainstorming on some stuff, but um, uh, you know, because I guess people aren't linking quite as much now, but there's there's definitely people I'm looking forward to um, working with. Um, I did one session last week. Uh with this producer um ramil from brockhampton which was sick oh sick so hopefully uh we'll work work again maybe meet <clears> some <throat> of the other guys because i know that's like a 14 person crew or something right. but um yeah there's definitely a lot of people out here i'm hyped to meet like you know most of my favorite musicians kind of already live here um like thundercat anderson <laughs> pock lewis cole a lot of these oh, people sure. um sick. so you know that's kind of a dream farther down the line to work with them but yeah i definitely I'm definitely hyped to, uh, yeah, I'm definitely excited about, you know, the possibilities out here. Sure. What's, what's your, like, I mean, what's your primary goal, I guess, now that you are here? Is it, are you, are you trying to sort of spearhead the whole artist career thing, or do you want to write, or do you want to produce, or keep touring as much as you, well, as much um, as you were prior to COVID anyway? 
I kind of want to do. I kind of want to like do the artist and the producer collaborator thing kind of simultaneously. Sort of um, yeah. like how I think James Blake is kind of a good example. Or like dude, man. he like he has his artist thing, but then he also produces with people, but right. still has his artist sound. So yeah. kind of like yeah. not yeah, just kind of working on both. But I think definitely. Um, I mean, I think I'm probably gonna lean towards more producer collaborator at first out here just because like i've had a ton of time alone to work on my artist shit and like i think not to diss myself but I, there's a lot of better singers and and like once covid gets kind of lifted it's, it's just i'm looking forward to that energy of a lot of different cooks cooking together kind of Facts. as opposed to just oh this is like a solo project you know yeah i mean like the, but, with the better singer thing like Talk your shit, man. Yeah, yeah. Talk your shit. Max, I'm gonna fuck up an artist now. <laughs> My shit about to go platinum tomorrow. Yeah. No, what, what I'm like, as I'm like, you know, navigating through this whole music thing, and it's just like, especially just in the industry, you're like, you don't have mm-hmm. to be the best singer. Yeah, there yeah. There are tons of just people who I think personally are not good singers, yet yeah. they have a huge following. And, and Shout out Bob Dylan. <laughs> where, are you, where are you at? <laughs> yeah. no but like they have a huge, huge following and it's just like I don't think it's uh, like we were talking about uh, last episode with Grace mm-hmm. um, it's not necessarily you don't have to have necessarily like, the best voice in yeah. order to you, sure. know, you know people are um, people are can, can relate maybe to the music yeah. or you know it touches them through music or just the tone of their voice or just you know what I mean yeah so, definitely there's yeah. always someone better too so that's, that's a bad reason not to do something like right that. Can you turn it on one more time? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. We're not using this camera anymore. I, like, I'm I, might, I might run to the bathroom for like 30 seconds. Yeah, do you think? Do you think? But yeah. You know? So that's that's one thing I'm definitely like like figuring out. Like, yo, you don't have to be the best bass player. You don't gotta be the best guitar player. You don't have to be the best singer. You know what I mean? And to to be able to t- touch lots of people. Through music, you know what I mean. So it's 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 definitely a thing. It's definitely a thing. Um, no, I think songs are, are way more important than talent, right? Because I mean, I mean the... never mind. No, no, so, no, no, so, no, no. So, just that, that's what it is. I mean, obviously, like you know, we love hearing like a virtuoso vocalist or, or, mm-hmm. or whatever you know do her thing. Like we love listening to you know Jennifer Hudson come out and smash and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But essentially, what 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 connects us the most, you know, to the music is the song itself. You know, what I'm saying like. Pharrell can't sing, but fronting is a fucking bop. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, it's, right. it's what it is. And I feel, like, I feel that way about a lot of artists, man. Like, I just don't need, I don't need you to, uh, who's, who's, who's short of just did the national anthem? Um, um, uh, um, uh, it just killed. Oh, Gary, no, uh, no, um, no, no, no. At the inauguration or no? Jennifer Hudson? No, not Jennifer no. Hudson. Oh, it, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, <laughs> Put it in the comments. Her, 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 her. Oh, her. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't need you to hurt me to death. I, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I, I don't. I don't need. I, I don't. I mean, not that her is gonna do a shit ton of runs all the time. She's very mm-hmm. tasteful. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, but yeah, I don't. I don't need every concert to be like. I don't need every vocalist to to be like a church vocalist. Like where Fantasia Verena. Like, yeah, Burino, yeah exactly. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I don't need it, man. Because I'm gonna connect with the song that you wrote long right. before I connect with her voice. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I, I want to feel good. I don't always need to be impressed. Like, I think right. it's, it's kind of like, for me, like it's like a holdover from like just, just the 757. It's just like, you have to be like a fire, fire singer or you have to be a fire, the best, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. Musician or whatever. Yeah. Now, and I'm learning now, like, yo, you don't have to do that. You don't have to be, have that mentality as long as your, your songs um, you know, fans connect with your music. Uh-huh. Doesn't matter what connects them. It may be it may be the tone of your voice, your singing ability, or the music, or whatever. But as long yeah. as it connects, they connect. And, you know, that's all that matters. And you know, you'll have that large following. Right. You know? Yeah, as strange as it is, I find like the most that a lot of times, like the most talented vocalists, the most talented keyboard players, bassists, or whatever, make way better sidemen. Than they do actual artists. You know mm, yeah. I mean? Like, and yeah. obviously, you know, there's a, like mm-hmm. a fuck ton of exceptions and stuff. You yeah. Know? Again, RP chick. But yeah. like, you know, it's, 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 it's so strange to me how that happens. Cause like, yeah, it, it, again, it just goes back to songs and stuff. And, but it's, it's funny. Back in the day, back in yeah. like 
like you know when jazz was pop music mm. it was the opposite you yeah. had to be the yeah. best trumpet player best sure. saxophone player best keep you know what i'm saying that yeah. was when talent actual real real raw talent was celebrated and and like it was what made you you know yeah it. yeah but now it's well, just like okay you don't yeah. have to be as talented as long it, as mm-hmm. go ahead i'm sorry go ahead. oh no i was just i'll say i think a lot of that too co- goes into kind of like how a lot of people in music school will kind of want to skip to the they kind of want to keep getting better so they want to skip to the next step but then a lot of times it's like can you play something simple and have someone feel it and so you shouldn't really be skipping to the next step or learning about the next like i mean you can but then it's just like well if you know because that's kind of all it you know that's an ultimate test of just can you yeah. play a couple chords and have someone feel something? Yeah, shout right. out to drummers everywhere. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah exactly. Like, stop chopping so much. Yeah. Right. Like sit in the well, fucking yeah, pocket like, for a little bit. Like man. less yeah. is more. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Less is definitely more. And, that, and me personally, I had like when I, especially when I first moved out here yeah. and I was doing mm-hmm. sessions, I had to learn that. Like I was so used yeah. to being that seven five seven mentality of like yeah, gotta, gotta yeah, yeah, exactly. No, especially when you, when it comes to like writing songs. Less is definitely more. Like it just be like three chord progressions, and that you're good. That's yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be doing nothing crazy. No, yeah, thirteen chords, seventeen chords, nineteen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I do nothing crazy. Just yeah, yeah. Do it more with less. Boom, boom, mm-hmm. and you know, let it let it be tasteful and let it breathe sometimes. So yeah, less is definitely uh, that's something I, I definitely learned. Mm-hmm. Um, being out here, less is more, especially when we trying to write songs and do sessions with yeah. artists. Mm-hmm artists don't think like musicians it's like mm-hmm. they need something they can write to yeah you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so yeah. did you ever have yeah. that i don't did you ever have to learn that the hard way like you were in a session and like the producer either said that they hated what you were doing because you were doing so much because you know, definitely you're a musician first. definitely like yeah some of my first sessions i was just kind of you know doing too much too fast and then yeah. kind of realizing like okay wait like if you're writing something like there still needs to be room for a melody or even after the melody there should still be room for it to breathe so like you know i was kind of just like you know flexing a little bit on keys but sometimes that doesn't support the song as well so yeah mm-hmm. just trying to start making that switch of you know how can everything you play be supporting something else yeah. instead of like taking the space right so then it's just like you know is everything you're doing making the melody sound better? Mm-hmm. Because even sometimes that's just kind of an important question if you're playing like an accompaniment role in production. Like, mm. And a lot of times it's easy to just kind of like, oh, let me just, you know, because, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah, I definitely, definitely learned that from, or just like also doing some pop sessions where it's just like I quickly throw in too many like minor nine chords and it's like, Preach. all right, man, all right. We, we don't, Bro, we don't want that. Hold me the fuck up, man. Yeah, right. yeah, it's like, and yeah so but then still you know still how can i find the right line of throwing in some of that stuff but Mm -hmm. not going overboard it's about it's definitely a balance man you gotta like you know what i mean i think that's why i like working in r&b and even though r&b is certainly not one of my biggest influences i like working in it because they tend to be i mean because of the roots of r&b they're a little bit more forgiving right how much more i'm allowed to do like like i'm not going to flex when i'm in a session and i'm not going to throw in like a bunch of you know flat 11 flat 13 bullshit yeah you know but like (laughs) diminished (laughs) again i'm I'm just not going to do it but like because you know because it's it's black music you know and it it, Mm -hmm. it comes from church it comes from Mm -hmm. you know it comes from jazz Jazz, and stuff right like it's they they you're, you're allowed to be a little bit more colorful with chords i remember right. like the first time i did a, a pop session in la uh-huh um we're just doing like a bunch of pitches for you know like you know like justin bieber and mm-hmm. selena gomez and stuff like that just like a bunch of like those kind of pitches mm-hmm. and this is this is when i first got to la too so i hadn't really dialed into the whole uh like get out of stage mentality and like yeah, get into yeah. like the studio mentality mm-hmm. so as mm-hmm. soon as i sat down it's like played some cool shit just to flex a little yeah, bit yeah. You know, show my ass <laughs> a little bit and they're like like dude, dude as soon as i did they're like hey bro yeah stop all that bullshit man like, <laughs> <laughs> yo yeah bro, i dude, i learned so quick man it was <laughs> yeah. like, it was yeah. it was the rudest awakening man. Was. yeah yeah and event, i mean i was like eventually like towards the end of the session like i actually like found a pocket uh-huh. where i was yeah. playing things that i enjoyed to play and also they found approachable for them yeah. to write to and stuff you know, right. so it was cool but yeah yeah <laughs> bro my first month here i was taking l's yeah i was taking real l's man yeah Yo. i do 
I feel like sometimes it can be mad helpful when you're in like one of those pop sessions and there's someone. Sometimes it can be annoying as fuck, but when there's someone that is maybe just a writer or doesn't know anything about music, yeah. but they're kind of guiding you and say, or just saying different stuff of like, all right, let's get something a little bit like just talking in terms of like mood, but they don't yeah. know anything about language. And yeah. then you have to, under the pressure, like try to do that stuff. I feel like you, I've kind of learned a lot from yeah. having yeah. this sort of random outsider influence. Yeah, yeah. yeah it'll, it'll definitely like... It'll it'll kind of chisel you like get you sharpen yeah. you you know what I'm saying yeah, especially yeah. trying to trying to like okay understand okay their lingo and like what they mean and just descriptive right. words like I think I just did a um I did I did some Kojo you, mm-hmm. sure, you know mm-hmm. well you know yeah, yeah, yeah. shout out Kojo, Kojo. he won't nice. he won't want to come up here yeah, but he doesn't want to be on the podcast because he's a flaker. <laughs> 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 Captain Cap over here. Uh-huh. Nah, but like, you know, he told me, this, he sent me a track. And he asked, hey, I want some guitar on it. Mm-hmm. He didn't really give me any direction. So right. I was like, okay, let me just, you know, do some. I'm going to do me. Nigga, I'm Maxwell. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Granted, I, 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 I simplified it a little bit more. I, I dumbed it down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But and then he was like, okay, I, I'm actually going in this direction. So it kind of guided me into, okay, what he actually wanted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a thing. Yeah, that was, I think that was a whole muscle that I kind of had to develop. Like mm-hmm. once I moved out here is mm-hmm. uh, like learning how to interpret. I don't know, just, just sort of spend like five to 10 minutes, you know, 15 minutes, maybe talking to an artist about, or a writer, mm-hmm. trying to figure out what they've been listening to and what their influences are. Mm-hmm. Right. And then have them guide me to make something even though they have no idea, like no understanding mm-hmm. about how music works or whatever. Cause I mean, like right. it's, and I, I kind of like working in those situations where, mm-hmm. you know, they just have no idea what, what, what a triad is and stuff like that. Cause yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it forces you to like, you mean think. the Chinese gang? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, literally. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Cause they say things like, Hey, can you make this sound like, and it's a lot of like shoulder movements and stuff. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, yeah, can you make it sound like more bouncy? You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, yeah. it doesn't make me bounce. Like, make it sound more bouncy. You know, yeah. they have no idea what pizzicato or staccato is or spiccato yeah, yeah. or anything like right. that. But what they mean is like, oh yeah, you know, like pluck mm-hmm. it a little bit. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. I, I I love being forced into situations where I have to reinterpret what the fuck. Like, they don't know what they want yet. Yeah, they just know right. what it, they want it to feel like. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the sessions like that are a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, I think it's also like with piano, it's really easy to do too much too fast yeah. as a production mm-hmm. instrument. Absolutely. So it's also kind of helpful to learn like, all right, play something simple, then add in another part, do mm-hmm. something else simple, like a more prop mentality, kind of like layering instead of right. just, oh, I can play all these arpeggios right now. And it's like, well, we don't have any more space left, dude. Like, right. So, yeah, I find like the more that I um, like the more that I learn about production and stuff and the more artists that I work with, I'm way less concerned about what chords i'm choosing to build songs and now it's way more yeah. about sound design you yeah. know what i'm saying because essentially like in pop music and r&b where we've, we've been recycling the same yeah. chord progressions for fucking 100 Fact. years yeah you know what i'm saying so like yeah, yeah we can we can two five one you we can three six yeah. two five one you two fucking death yeah. yeah you know what i'm saying like like it's gonna it yeah. doesn't matter what pro- what progression we pick it's gonna feel good it's gonna sound nostalgic it's gonna sound yeah. familiar yeah. you know what i'm saying but what what i think is is way more effective at getting those placements is how do you use these same progressions that everyone's accustomed to, the same yeah. ones that make everybody move? How do you sound design them? What voices do you mm-hmm. choose? Mm-hmm. What what different instruments do you what blend? What timbres do you use? Yeah. Exactly, to make it feel like what they want it to feel like. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and I think like going along with what you're saying, it's like they want that that combination of new and familiar. So a familiar progression but with some really new sounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like if it's all new, it's a little bit too much. Yeah, there has yeah. to be something to hold on to. So like, yeah. but yeah, Definitely. I think that's a good. Definitely, uh, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. Do you, I don't. Do you, are are you mostly like producing with like acoustic stuff? Uh, I've been yeah, I've been using a lot of like still piano based stuff. I'm mm-hmm. getting into some more synths. Uh, I just got a, a Yamaha DX7. I've been mess, been good for you, man. You're right. Um, <laughs> yeah. that's, it's confusing as hell to, to program, yeah. but uh, like I've been um, using some of like the different presets on that. But yeah. I'm trying to get more into like, you know, sound design and designing sounds. Um, but I've basically just been kind of tweaking presets and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not really like building from scratch, like synthesis. Yeah, so. yeah no, no, building, building from scratch is, is pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's, it's like okay, I'll just tweak what it's already there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna play guitar. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe I swell a little bit. I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll still be sick. 
Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, hey, that's the game, man. That's, oh, man. That's, that's Maxwell Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you paid for. <laughs> um, I'm going uh, to ask like a, a question that does not really pertain to music. Just a, Sometimes I just throw mm-hmm. up random questions. Yeah. Um, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Hmm. Dan or Elijah? This, uh, this just gonna get real nerdy, bro. Go ahead, man. This I think I would have for. like, I mean, like you know, not like you asked that question naturally. Everyone's like, oh, invisibility, or I want to be able to fly, I want right. gills, whatever the fuck, you know. Like, yeah. No, I think I'd have like one hundred percent control over my body, like down to the cellular level, Ooh. to the mm. point where like I could, That'd be great. Uh, like I could grow another hand, or I could, Ooh. I could Whoa. make gills for myself, or like it, it basically means I'd never get die. sick. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, yeah. exactly. you mean matter manipulation, but for, just for your strict yeah. for your body? Yeah, absolutely. That would and, be sick. Yeah, because yeah, it means like I could never get sick. Yeah. You know, because I could literally just like force shit out of my body. You know, mm-hmm. like, yeah, like it's, yeah. yeah, stuff like that. That would be, that yeah. would be crazy. Yeah. What you, uh, uh, I think I would go you? with just the classic, just, I would just want to fly. <laughs> that'd be sick I'm, I'm yeah, here for that, that would. or maybe be able to read anyone's mind mm. would be cool but that, that would actually give me anxiety though <laughs> no, that would be terrible <laughs> <laughs> being able to see through stuff will be cool yeah <laughs> peeping top <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right being able Don't, to see listen, through shirts this is gonna cool. turn into a me too conversation <laughs> <laughs> real quick yeah <laughs> 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 um, nah, for me, I think just give me all the powers of Superman. I'm, I'm straight, you know what I'm saying? So, just like, yeah. of course, Maybe you got muscles already, and bro. Why are you trying but to- I can't lift the car, you know what I mean? Like, invis- I mean, invi- you, you might be able to lift a fiat if you try real hard, you might be able to lift a fiat, yeah, maybe, maybe. But yeah, give me like, invis- nah, I'm invisible, invisibility, but you know, laser beam eyes, flight, <laughs> or or just um. The power to heal. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like cool. that'd be sick. Yeah. So, um, I'll, I'm gonna ask a couple questions from IG. Oh, um sure. let's see, Ty Ty as in Tyler, one word, as how does an eight weight affect the musicality of the song versus bass guitar versus synth bass? And what is your preferences? What what is your preference for a song? So wait, how does an eight oh eight affect electric the, the mus- musicality of the song? Uh yeah. Versus bass guitar or oh, some oh, bass oh, and right. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I I guess it it kind of depends on the the vibe you're going for with the song. Um, you know, a lot of times electric bass will will have more of an intimate live feel, mm-hmm. which which can be right. Um, I think it's also cool to stack them sometimes and play around with combinations. Yeah, um, but uh. Yeah, I tend, uh, I mean, 808s, that goes back to that kind of classic, familiar sound that, mm. you know, having an 808 can help people be, people might not even realize, oh, I know that sound, but it's like, then it gives them something to hold on to. But yeah, I think it's, there's no kind of right answer. It's just sort of, they're all, all useful tools for, depending on the circumstance. Right. I, I, I think, um, just just different tones and different timbre. Just for example, just the bass guitar, synth bass and eight oh eights, it kinda paints it just helps paint the picture, right? So mm-hmm. using different palettes to a, a painting. Mm-hmm. Say if if you want the trees to look like an autumn color, you use mm-hmm. orange and red colors. Mm-hmm. If you want the tree to look like it's a uh, spring, if you're painting a tree. Mm-hmm. Spring colors. You're gonna use greens, light greens. If you want to look like it's fall, it's gonna. You're not gonna have any leaves on it, so you're gonna mm-hmm. use whites and browns and mm-hmm. dead looking colors. So you say autumn and fall and give two different descriptions. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I meant so. What did I say? So fall. Yeah, autumn. Say, okay. You want an autumn and fall? Make a red or orange. You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? But like you know, you, so if you, I'm just using that analogy of just y'all like painting up yeah. a tree. So. De- depending on what you know season it is, you're going to use different colors. So depending on what kind of song you're using, or not using, what, what kind of song you're you're painting, mm-hmm. um, it, it's like you can use an 808. Yeah. Depending on what the vibe is of the song, like you said before, you can use uh, um, bass guitar. It gives you a, a different tone, different feel, mm-hmm. and you can use synth bass. Gives you the same thing. So, me personally, I think. Um, 
my favorite would be the bass guitar because it has a lot of versatility to it. So mm-hmm. I can get the bass to sound like a synth bass. I can get mm-hmm. it to sound like an upright bass just with the, uh, you know, just the mm-hmm. different um, because things. Knobs. knobs. Yeah, the knobs. But it's uh, how you. <laughs> Words um, are important. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> uh, just how you can uh, tune tune in and just you know oh you can tweak it. The word tweak. Hey, oh listen. The word yeah, tweak, hard, you can man. tweak the sound. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Jesus. Yeah. So you could tweak the sound of a bass guitar. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Of electric bass. So I think that would be my my favorite. So yeah. yeah. What about you, Dan? <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know I if you answered answer the question. <laughs> I think I did. No. No, I, th- I think yeah, I think you did, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, I, I don't see me. A lot of them just tend to be sort of genre specific. I mean, obviously, it's 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 okay to sort of mix and match. Like you know, like maybe once in a while, it's okay to put an eight oh eight in a country song. Or I was, I was you know, literally just thinking that. You, you know? know, like it's yeah. But I, I think a lot of it tends to be genre specific. And I think every inst- every every instrument has its own functionality and makes you react certain ways. You know, what I mean, like if I was listening to. I don't know if I was listening to, what well, I don't know something trappy like, mm-hmm. uh, future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm listening to a future song, a lot of times I don't want to hear a bass guitar try to yeah. drive anything. It's not gonna, <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna, yeah. it's not gonna knock the way I want it to knock. Right? Yeah, you know, right. So, you know, it's it's just not gonna happen, man. So if yeah. I want something to be trappy or boomy, like yeah, I'm throwing the eight oh eights because yeah, yeah. You know, if I, I don't want to hear. In 808, sure. play the bass line to y'all niggas got me hot. Gooms, gooms. Like, it's just not gonna, it, that's just gonna be fucking ugly. You know what I mean? Like, that shit, that shit would be terrible. You know? So, yeah, bro. Frequencies would be clashing. Like, it'd be, it'd be awful, man. So, yeah, oh my God. Yeah, every, every, everything has its place, man. Yeah, it's, it's a thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll ask one more. Uh, J underscore R's underscore universe as. Has the writing process been better or worse for you during the pandemic? I'll start. Um, that's that's like it, it, it's both. I'll say both. Number one, because I'm at home all day. It, I'll say worse. I'll start off with worse. Right. I've been home. All, I'm here all day. I don't go out anywhere, so it's kind of hard to be inspired by new things. You know, we're not traveling mm-hmm. traveling anymore. Not seeing different places, different things. So, it's, um, you know, it, it, it takes away from the inspiration. Um, but I say better, too, because I have time to actually sit down and and um, work out the ideas that I already had. You know, mm-hmm. comes to, when it comes to like lyrics and, and, and music, I can actually sit down and think, OK, I can polish things. So I, for me, it's both, you know, mm-hmm. so. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think it's about the same. I think it's. I don't want to say worse, but it, I think there's certain aspects about songwriting that have been more challenging. Because um, I don't know, I, I feel like I get better a lot during the collaborative process, and it's very mm-hmm. difficult to collaborate organically when you can't be in the same room with somebody. Yeah. And I mean, there's there's so many things that I learned about production and about being a musician and stuff that I just like like I I never I never would have gotten better in those aspects if I had never been allowed to be in a room or on stage or on a gig or whatever with somebody who is better than me at that thing so now it's i'm i'm missing that aspect of, of songwriting you know because I'm, I'm just not i'm not organically learning as much as i was this time last year right uh but also it's it's made me explore way more like I, I'm, I'm taking way more time now to explore the things on my own than i was you know pre pre-quarantine mm-hmm. which is which is kind of cool yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel kind of similar to, um, similarly to like it's a little bit harder to get inspiration because you know we're not living our lives maybe as fully as we were like yeah. meeting new people daily and stuff. Um, mm. So it's why it was a little hard for me to write lyrics sometimes just to pull from like, and maybe it's just an excuse, but like you know I don't have as much going on like in my life as I did before. Um, mm. But it's, yeah, it's definitely been good in that also the feeling of just there's so much time so you can kind of dig into some of the stuff you might not have had felt like you had time for before. And now, you know, it's like, yeah, it's definitely a blessing in some ways, like compared to like how it would be if we were like all like stage actors in a play. And it's just like the play is canceled. Like, all right, Right. we're out of work. It's like, well, the gigs are canceled, but at least we can still like write and hone our craft. Mm -hmm. So 
it's you know a blessing in some ways but yeah so kind of a mix mixed bag as well i say yeah where are you pulling your inspiration right now that you can't really collaborate as much as you used to be able to um yeah i guess i'm pulling it from you know still like listening to music that i that's coming out that i'm really inspired by Mm. and then also just kind of trying to tap back into like you know life experiences and stuff before and just try to tap into some of those emotions that like you know even though they might i mean there's still some stuff going on to write about but mm-hmm. i think a lot of people are in in a similar boat in kind of just you know right feeling stuck at home or whatever yeah. or mm-hmm. feeling too comfortable in their comfort zone sort of mm-hmm. Yeah, but, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's a whole thing, man. It's like this. This pandemic is definitely, definitely like. It was like a blessing and a curse. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying because I, we we had all last year and this year slated to be Yo. literally everywhere around. We the were world, about man. to not sleep for a year. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yo, like, we, like we already been to like how many continents? We've been to five, uh, and we yeah. were about to be in what. They South were, America? That would be the six? South America, yeah. Oh, Damn. my God. Bro, we were going to be in Brazil. Brazil. Damn. On my birthday. Argentina, Chile. When's your birthday? Uh, 420. Hey. Oh, nice. Yeah, this was going to be nuts. Damn. But all that stuff's still going to happen? or just getting pushed back? or. <laughs> yeah, everything's kind of up in the air, man. Like, we might, might be doing some things, like maybe one or two things in april but it's uh-huh. it's going to be really difficult to do anything domestic before 2022 yeah. right yeah Crazy. like overseas maybe like there's yeah uh, over, yeah overseas we, we might be able to tour mm-hmm. by the end of the year maybe yeah, yeah. that's nasty yeah like 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 fourth quarter maybe yeah yeah, right. yeah nothing yeah now it's, it's kind of just like stuck in in live streams and production which yeah. isn't a bad thing yeah you know like yeah. this the, the whole thing definitely forced me to become a better producer or like really just start producing yeah because i think producing was one of those things that i had always planned on doing but i'd never really taken the time mm. to do it because you know a i was just being mm. like a lazy piece of shit b because we were flying all over the world and you yeah. know just right. like touring and shit so yeah the yeah the, the whole pandemic definitely forced me to like sit down and do some yeah. work basically yeah and I, and I think to tag on with that I think a lot of it is I, I always felt FOMO before mm-hmm. kind of but now it's like that FOMO feeling is totally gone What's so it's FOMO? like, like fear or like of fear out. missing out so like oh, okay. I feel like I could, I could be like you know <laughs> in, in the studio all day or, or like checking out some just practicing piano or doing something that I wouldn't have done but I'm not missing out on any concerts right. or anything yeah. so it's like yeah you can kind of it's, it's yeah like i said it's definitely like a blessing and a curse because all right granted we're not doing tours but i've definitely been able to a put out an ep mm. kind of hone my artist bag um mm-hmm. artist bag and also just writing for other people i got a lot mm-hmm. of more opportunities to produce and write for other people um yeah. so yeah so it's just like mm-hmm. yeah yeah got anything coming out Oh, yeah, um, sure. yeah. I got a um, I got a single coming out on March twelfth. Um, actually recorded it back in Durham with um, actually if you guys well, just talking to you guys, but I guess everyone's listening. But um, yeah. If, <laughs> so another the sax player in uh, John Curry's other band, oh, nice. Alan. Yeah. Oh, he's, word. he's yeah. on the he's shout on out the John project. Curry. Yeah, uh, so, shout out Zucru. Um, yeah, yes. Zucru. So Alan from Zucru is playing sax, and it was like we we recorded it uh, like basically eight hours of improvised stuff like the the last day of 2020 with mm-hmm. my friend butler on bass and then this drummer mike o'day mm-hmm. um who's also like good friends with john um but um yeah so the one we like and then so i've been kind of like chopping that up and editing it but the first single from that is coming out uh on march march 12th oh. um and then I'm, I'm still listening to uh city in the sky oh word piano work, thanks man. It's, it's fine oh thank you bro yeah i'm still listening yeah to i'm that. hoping to do another piano project kind of like that too maybe maybe another places thing maybe inspired by la mm. um yeah be lit. but yeah i like i think i want to do another kind of concept album like that where mm-hmm. every song is like a different place yes. in la but it's yeah. piano centric yeah um but um yeah and i'm just just uh yeah those are those are kind of the main things there we go. Right now. I don't know. Yeah, you got anything coming up? Uh, not a whole lot, man. Or really, it's I have a bunch of things that are done and uh-huh. they're just kind of wrapped up in, you know, 
label shit. Uh, yeah. Like it's, it's, we're going like to talk that. about that on another episode. Man. Yeah, so <laughs> label yeah. with, with Masego's label? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Just, just, just in general. Like, oh, oh, with, yeah, 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 I've been writing like a bunch of things for a bunch of artists and mm. cutting them and stuff like that. And it's, it's really just... You know, yeah. a waiting on paperwork. Dude, that's not something that I expected to be a thing when I started doing this. Yeah, uh, but yeah, just like just just, just administrative stuff like waiting on paperwork. Mm, or, it takes so long. Or or fucking dealing with lawyers. It's mm-hmm. I, I feel like at this point, ninety percent of the work that I do has nothing to do with music. Yeah, it's right. it's, it's it's a lot yeah. of yeah, it's a lot of administrative stuff. But yeah, uh, that's yeah. A lot, with independent artists, it's a lot easier to just like finish the song and then. Get it out. Yes, <laughs> that's, like, that's a yeah. Long as hell. That's with, definitely a thing. with some of the labels. <laughs> yeah, I think I um I, I'm I'm working on my second EP now, so that should be out nice. probably in September. Oh, maybe. Nice. So, um, but yeah, Merlo is still he's doing his thing. Sick. Go stream Merlo, guys. Um, uh-huh. yeah, man. That's up. Yeah, so we're gonna I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, camera's going dead again. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, follow us on Instagram. Follow Elijah at. Elijah Fox, one word. Uh, follow Dan Foster at at NSYNC Hottie ninety one. <laughs> Dan <laughs> underscore the underscore man. Most still hasn't changed it. Follow nice. me at Maxwell underscore Sensei on Instagram, and also follow follow the Lobby Call podcast page. Uh, we can, um, that's a new page I just got up. We just got up, and um, you know it's going to have a lot of more a lot of information on it. Uh, I have. Uh, merch probably coming i don't know we're, we're working Ooh. that out but um yeah follow us on instagram and that's been another episode of lobby call Ooh. peace